everybody, welcome to Hello. Root Pops Right Show, me BP1 and BP2. Uh, we've got you. a bit of a history for you today, middle of, excuse me, middle of oh. honour. <laughs> uh, recipient Master Sergeant uh, Roy P. Benavide, uh, US Army, uh, okay. be taking us through some from information, I guess. All right. Um, receiving the Medal of Honor. Um, why are we doing this one? We're doing this because uh, uh, another um, retired master sergeant, I believe he was, uh, Hawk, retired Apache pilot, the nice one, um, asked us to give this a go. And um, he said that he did meet um, this person that we're talking about, uh, Master Sergeant Roy P. Benavides, uh, shortly before um, he sadly passed away. So nice one, Hawk. Thanks for that. Uh, and this we are Bill here Butler. with... Yeah, we're here with the Chief of <laughs> Staff insane. of the Natural, uh, National Veterans Memorial and Museum, uh, Bill Butler. Bill Butler. All right. Colonel uh, U.S. Uh, Army. We'll talk over uh, it as we go through, um, if there's any bits you want to bring up. All right, let's get into it. This memorial and museum. Today we want to celebrate the life and heroism of Master Sergeant Roy P. Benavidez. We're doing this in partnership with the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center to honor and recognize Medal of Honor recipients throughout our history. Don't here at the National Veterans like that Memorial here. Museum, mm -hmm. we are unique in that we share the story of the nice. veteran experience with America. We don't have any tanks on our lawn or field artillery pieces uh, outside the front door or helicopters suspended from the ceiling. We share the stories of veterans from all areas of service, all branches of service throughout our history. So I want to talk about Master Sergeant Roy P. Benavides. He was born on August 5th, 1935, to a Mexican farmer and a Yaqui Indian mother in Texas. He joined the Texas Army National Guard in 1953 during the Korean War, and then transitioned to active duty in 1955, serving in the 82nd Airborne Division, and then the 5th Special Forces Group. His service in Special Forces took him to Vietnam, where he fought courageously and valiantly in 1968. And we want to talk about his story and his experience and what he termed six hours of hell. On February 24, 1981, President Ronald Reagan presented Roy P. Benavidez with a Medal of Honor in the Pentagon. Reagan turned to the press and said, and I quote, if the story of his heroism were a movie script, you would not believe it. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Congress, March 3rd, 1863, has awarded in the name of the Congress the Medal of Honor to Master Sergeant Roy P. Benavidez, United States Army, retired. Let me read the plain, factual, military language of the citation that was lost for too long a time. On May 2nd, 1968, Master Sergeant, then Staff Sergeant, Roy P. Benavides, distinguished himself by a series of daring and extremely valorous actions while assigned to Detachment B-56, 5th Special Forces Group Airborne, 1st Special Forces Republic of Vietnam. On the morning of May 2nd, 1968, a 12 man Special Forces Reconnaissance Team was inserted by helicopters in a dense jungle area west of Lac Ninh, Vietnam, to gather intelligence information about confirmed large-scale enemy activity. This area was controlled and routinely patrolled by the North Vietnamese Army. After a short period of time on the ground, the team met heavy enemy resistance and requested emergency extraction. Three helicopters attempted extraction, but were unable to land due to intense enemy small arms and anti-aircraft fire. Sergeant Vietnamese Vitas was at the forward operating base in Lac Ninh monitoring the operation by radio when these helicopters returned to offload wounded crew members and to assess aircraft damage. I was in another staging area waiting for our next assignment. When I heard on the radio something like a popcorn machine, then I heard a voice, get us out of here, get us out of here, come in and get us out quick, ASAP. I asked the radio operator, who are those? He said, I don't know. They haven't gave us any call sign. And I saw some helicopter pilot run to the flight line, scrambling. I ran right behind him. Sergeant Benavides voluntarily boarded a returning aircraft to assist in another extraction attempt. I saw a bag of medical supplies, I picked it up, went over to my helicopter. 
got on a helicopter. We got on with the forward air controller that got us in. He said, you can't go in there. You can't go in. It's too hot. Little did I know that I was going to spend six hours in hell. Realizing that all the team members were either dead or wounded and unable to move to the pickup zone, he directed the aircraft to a nearby clearing where he jumped from the hovering helicopter and ran approximately 75 meters under withering small arms fire to the crippled team. Prior to reaching the team's position, he was wounded in his right leg, face, and head. Despite these painful injuries, he took charge, repositioning the team members and directing their fire to facilitate the landing of an extraction aircraft and the loading of wounded and dead team members. He then threw smoke canisters to direct the aircraft to the team's position. Despite his severe wounds and under intense enemy fire, he carried and dragged half of the wounded team members to the awaiting aircraft. He then provided protective fire by running alongside the aircraft as it moved to pick up the remaining team members. As the enemy's fire intensified, he hurried to recover the body and the classified documents on the dead team leader. When he reached the team leader's body, Sergeant Benavides was severely wounded by small arms fire in the abdomen and grenade fragments in his back. At nearly the same moment, the aircraft pilot was mortally wounded and his helicopter oh. crashed. No Although in extremely critical condition due to his multiple wounds, Sergeant Benavides secured the classified documents and made his way back to the wreckage where he aided the wounded out of the overturned aircraft and gathered the stunned survivors into a defensive perimeter. Under increasing enemy automatic weapons and <laughs> grenade fire, he moved around the perimeter, distributing water and ammunition to his weary men, reinstilling in them a will to live and fight. Facing a buildup of enemy opposition with a beleaguered team, Sergeant Benavides mustered his strength and began calling in tactical airstrikes and directing the fire from supporting gunships to suppress the enemy's fire and so permit another extraction attempt. He was wounded again in his thigh by small arms fire while administering oh, wow. first aid to a wounded team member just before another extraction helicopter was able to land. His indomitable spirit kept him going as he began to carry his comrades to the craft. On his second trip with the wounded, he was clubbed from behind by an enemy soldier. In the ensuing hand-to-hand -hand combat, he sustained additional wounds to his head and arms before killing his adversary. He then continued under devastating fire to carry the wounded to the helicopter. Upon reaching the aircraft, he spotted and killed two enemy soldiers who were rushing the craft oh, yeah. from an angle that prevented the aircraft door gunner from firing upon them. With little strength remaining, he made one last trip to the perimeter to ensure that all classified material had been collected or destroyed and to bring in the remaining wounded. Only then, wow. in serious condition from numerous wounds and loss of blood, <clears> did he <throat> allow himself to be pulled into the extraction aircraft. Sergeant Benavides' gallant choice to join voluntarily his comrades who were in critical straits, to expose himself constantly to withering enemy fire, and his refusal to be stopped despite numerous severe wounds saved the lives of at least eight men. His fearless personal leadership, tenacious devotion to duty, and extremely valorous actions in the face of overwhelming odds were in keeping with the finest traditions of the military service and reflect the utmost credit on him and the United States Army. You heard what the president read the citation of how I earned the Medal of Honor. But he didn't tell you of what I went through when I in, engaged in the hand-to-hand -hand combat. I was hitting the mouth with the butt of the weapon. My jaws were locked. After my last return back to the helicopter, when I was boarded on, I was holding my intestines in my hand. And I remember that my feet had been lifted and I was inserted into the body bag and I could hear that zipper coming up and I thought, oh my God, no, no. My eyes were shut because I had blood all over my face and my eyes and the blood had dried up in my eyelids. And I couldn't talk because my jaws were locked, and I could hear that zipper coming up, coming up. I'll find out later. Jerry Cottenham made that doctor at least to feel my heartbeat. When I felt that hand on my chest, I made the luckiest shot I ever made in my life. 
I spit in the doctor's face. After receiving his Medal of Honor, Master wow. Sergeant Roy Benavidez became an advocate for veterans' issues to Congress. He also became an inspirational speaker and spoke to organizations, services, schools across the country and throughout the world. He inspired youth with his stories of selfless service and his sacrifice. Master Sergeant Benavidez died on November 29, 1998 at age 63. He was buried with full military honors at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. I'm asked hundreds of times, would you do it over again? Mm -hmm. In my 25 years in the military, I feel like I've been overpaid for the service to my country. There'll never be enough paper to print the money nor enough gold in Fort Knox for me to have to keep from doing what I did. I'm proud of being American and even prouder. And I'm even prouder that I've earned the privilege to wear the Green Beret. Hmm. Wow, what a, what a, wow. You know, again, uh, inspirational moving um and you know just courage above and beyond the call of duty really like he says you know you can't get paid enough to do that because at the end of the day you're going in there helping your teammates um and and that kind of thing is is what you get from sort of working in those type of environments you know anything police fire ambulance um yeah you just form a bond with your, your teammates and you do anything for them so i can understand that bit um entirely but uh yeah it must have been hell and and to come out the other side and you know still have the humor about it all afterwards and everything fair play um we don't you know again over in the uk we know of america we, we know of vietnam obviously we've seen the films done all that sort of stuff but we don't really know that i think we should sort of go back and do a bit of that um mr bp1 yes no i think we should uh, because i mean that was yeah i mean wow you know mm. I mean, it's just, to how people go through that in life you know what he went through nobody could ever ever know no. but to do it how he did it i mean just imagine doing it and not being injured yeah. to be injured to you know i mean and, and what he said at the end i mean it's just it, it doesn't bear thinking about but it was real he went yep. through that um and it's just incredible what an incredible incredible um story yeah. and, and something to have to go you know no human should have to do that when they're born you know to, 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 to you, you, you see that little human life and you think you know you're going to lead a life and you know no one expects no to have, to, go, to have to go through that not at all no so um thank you very much Hawk, for introducing us to master sergeant roy p benavides um i said at the beginning of the, the show i don't know what i was thinking um i was having a bit of a meltdown we do of course in the uk have the uh, lord ashcroft gallery at the imperial war museum uh, that houses the world's largest collection of Victoria crosses um, and also George crosses and you can go there and discover 250 stories of people who faced adversity and performed acts of bravery to be awarded those um, decorations so there you go there you go uh, yeah cheers Hawk, for that one mate uh, always inspiring always yes. you know something we I wasn't aware of totally and so you know it's great to great to see That's this it. sort of even flow out there and, and put it in my brain uh, exactly just to show how lucky we all are in it really it you is know? yeah not having had it to really go through does. that at all so thank you very much hawk uh always appreciate your time uh goodbye Fun. from cheers me and uh goodbye from him <laughs> later <laughs>